Okay. All right. Hey, we're here. We're here. We're live. How's everybody doing today? Welcome to the show, the first of two shows today, Thursday, May the 3rd, 2018. My goodness. Uh, welcome, everybody, one and all. Uh, nice to have you here. Uh, Eight o'clock tonight. I'm doing the second show, Primetime Trivia tonight. I'm locked and loaded. I've got my prime time, tr prime time trivia quizzes ready to go and uh, should be fun. Uh, so, yes, welcome one and all. Uh, nice to have you here today. Uh, what a great day for uh, weather-wise. My gosh, we are loving it here. Creston, British Columbia, practically uh, practically clear skies. A couple puffy white ones here in their little cloud. But is it ever nice? Um 70 degrees for the high right now. Uh, feeling great with the sun beating down on you. Feels warmer. Just love it. Uh, summer is around the corner. Spring is definitely settling in. I hope it's the same everywhere you are out there uh, today. Um, except for my friend in Kansas City. I'm kind of crossing our fingers, my fingers for her. Hopefully the uh, tornado nonsense is uh, over with and uh, back to normal there. That'd be nice. Uh, we'll see what's going on. The channel, the channel, the channel. Uh, good news about the channel. Um, a couple of things have been uh, working out. Um, oh, how about that? Oh, Wes, thank you. Uh, the channel is uh, is building again. Uh, we added eight subscribers uh, in the last 24 hours. Doesn't sound like a lot. We're now at 1,868. But um, that is the single largest day for subscribers in 10 days. <laughs> it's taken 10 days to actually have that many come in in one day. It's been one or two a day, if, if any, uh, but eight overnight. I must have said something. I must have said something. <laughs> so, yay. Welcome aboard the, on board the, uh, the uh, channel, newbies. And I hope if any of you out there are watching and you are newbies, uh, sign in, say hi to us. Uh, tell us where you're watching us from today. Where are you watching me from? What's your high temperature going to be today? Compare, uh, compare your weather to the rest of us. Uh, if you're uh, into going on a cruise, uh, whether you're a newbie, never been on a cruise before, haven't been on a cruise in a while, uh, or you're an addicted cruiser like most of these folks here are signing in are, you've come to the right place. Uh, we love talking about cruise ships, uh, the new ships that are coming on now, the new ships that are going to come on in the next year or so. Um, we're talk we talk about old cruise ships that have been refurbished. Uh, we love talking about the itineraries the various ports of call that you can visit um and we just love comparing notes uh, because things are changing all the time anybody out there you have any questions about going on a cruise or wondering what it's like or, or what the rules are or what can you bring on board or what different things mean as far as all the terminology goes just bring it on we'll be more than happy to talk to you and help you through through that so that will educate you on how cruising works uh if you're new to the channel today if you're watching me either live or you're watching the show, you know, months down the road. Uh, if you like what you see, and I hope you do, uh, please become a subscriber of the channel as we grow our audience. There's a subscribe button here. It's on all the time. It's a little red one. There's a subscribe button over there. Uh, that is a um, more of a permanent one just below this picture. And there's a little bell beside the little bell thing. Click on those and uh, you'll be notified every time I do an update, a uh, new video or when I'm going live or, or whatever's going on. In case anything happens on a cruise ship that's wild and wacky, like, you know, cruise ships uh, crashing in the docks <laughs> like we had two weeks ago or, or big fist fights on the open seas like we had a few months ago down in, <laughs> in Australia, uh, I'll just come on the air without, without any warning. I'll just start talking and uh, let everybody know what's going on as I know it. And uh, you'll get a notification right there. Boom. Bruce is on the air. Uh, what's going on? Something's up because he's not on his normal time. Something's happening. And you can check it out at your leisure. So, again, subscribe here or subscribe here. Love to have you on board. Thank you for joining. Also, a uh, big thank you and shout outs to my uh, viewers uh, who have been uh, helping me stay on this air and keep on going. Uh, those of you who are regulars do know this. Those of you who are not, you do not know this, but YouTube um, stopped paying small channels. Back in February, uh, they had a new rule that they brought in saying you need 1,000 subscribers and you have to have 4,000 hours of watch time to qualify to be monetizable for advertisers. And uh, the channel, we here, this channel with my great viewers at that time, 
uh, within, oh gosh, three weeks when we heard, heard the word, we had to go from 225 subscribers to 1,000 subscribers. We did it and uh, we met the minimum, uh, but we have not been monetized. We have been under review since Feb 20. Today is May the 3rd, so uh, March 20, April 20. 60 days plus another 70 days and 73 days 73 days um i have not been paid by youtube to do what i do which is work full time on this channel uh coming up with the stories we're going to talk about uh, trivia night and everything else uh so it's my subscribers and my viewers who have been helping by sending me either super chats during these live streams uh, but lately, I've been asking for and I've been receiving, thankfully, support for my subscribers and viewers through PayPal. And the reason I request PayPal over Super Chat, I don't mind Super Chat, but Super Chat is a, a bit of an issue because 30% of the donation doesn't go to me. It goes to YouTube for handling the money, and collecting it, and then accounting for it, and they take a profit. I only get 70 cents on the dollar from a super chat donation. Whereas with PayPal, instantaneous payout, 93 odd percent comes to me. It only runs me about 7% to collect the dough, convert it, transfer it, and get it. Big difference. And there's another thing. Uh, super chat only works when I'm on live. So only the folks who are watching me live can make a contribution to my cause. Whereas with PayPal, 24 7 anytime you feel like you want to help brucey out you can send him a couple of bucks on paypal and thank you one and all wes morrison uh viewer of mine a subscriber of mine from way back now <laughs> wes you've been around a while this is great just sent me 10 bucks on paypal and thank you wes very very much i'll get nine dollars 30 cents at least of that instead of just seven bucks makes a difference doesn't it it adds up and it's unbelievable so thank you again one and all also last night overnight uh those of you who are regulars you know who this person is auntie jane 11 uh from new zealand uh she's become a real fan of ours uh this channel i just love her uh she sent me 50 bucks last night on paypal and uh i just want to thank her so much for her support of my channel just fantastic from way down in new zealand this is great. Uh, I know she's picked up some merchandise from the store, which is another way you can help support the channel. If you want to wear some merchandise with uh, with uh, Traveling with Bruce on it, uh, we just loaded up a new logo today, about an hour and a half ago. There's a brand new logo on there. It's the uh, it's the five uh, the five cards, the uh, the check in cards, different colors from uh, from uh, cruises gone by. Uh, we call it five of a kind. Uh, and there's a five of a kind logo now on the store to go to my uh, uh, Red bubble store or the traveling with Bruce uh, uh, Traveling with Bruce store uh, go to my homepage and uh, you'll see the logo on the top It says traveling with Bruce and on the right hand side our icon logos the far right right next to the PayPal is a little red and white Dot which is red bubble click on that you're going right into the store Go to the bottom of that page once it loads up, and you'll see all the logos now that we have loaded uh, that are available. We can get, you can get a T-shirt or a coffee mug or a sticker or, or a tote bag or all kinds of variety of merchandise available. And uh, a portion of those proceeds, about I think I get about 25%, 30%, something like that, uh, comes to me as, as, a, as a profit. And the best part about that store is I can't foul it up. I, I can't screw it up. I don't make the product. I don't uh, uh, ship the product. I don't handle it in any way. These people, the Redbubble people, do it all. That's all they do. It's their shtick. And uh, I just supply, supply them with the logo that I want to put on my merchandise, on the merchandise that they offer. And you folks uh, order it through there. And I've been getting nothing but thumbs ups from everybody who's been ordering product through Redbubble. Happy customers. Great product quality um, on very quick shipping. Uh, if there's an issue with a return, they handle it. Um, it's great. I haven't had a single complaint, and I'm just thrilled about that because I did as much research as I could on Redbubble, and I, I got nothing but great, great raves, really thumbs-ups everywhere. And now it's happening for this channel. So 
funds are coming in from Redbubble on every time you guys grab a t-shirt or a coffee mug or whatever it is. And I say thank you very much. That's fantastic. Shortly, you'll see me wearing the stuff too. And um, uh, the uh, the PayPal donations. Uh, thank you one and all for that. That is making a huge difference because the funds are available immediately to, the, to, to me. Uh, and like I said, 93% comes through right through the other, even it might even be higher than that might be like 94 almost. So I, I average out at 93. Thank you all so much. New subscribers. Welcome. Regular viewers. Welcome. Uh, great to have you. Uh, let's see who's here. Let's say hi to everybody who's uh, popped by to say hi to me and let's see what's going on. Peter Heckham, uh, uh, signed in first. It's it kind of like, that's normal now. <laughs> Uh, Peter uh, at at 4:20 uh, said to me, "Hi Bruce, 89 degrees in Tarpon Springs. Uh, that's Florida. Wow! Uh, it it um, at night it drops down to 75. A uh, hardship. Uh, when you walk across the pavement, heat will still radiate up from the pavement even at night. I know you and I like this type of hot weather. It's wonderful. I love it. I I just I can't stop talking about that. I remember living in Palm." Desert California, where it'd be 114 in the daytime, 120 degrees, and you know, a foot off the pavement, off of a Costco parking lot, a foot off would be 150. I mean, it would just be so hot. So you'd you'd work your way to the car. <laughs> I used to drive a Lexus back about 10 years ago when I used to live there, 10, 12 years ago, and and I had a button on my key fob. You just hold it down as the open the open button. I can't remember which one it was. It would unlock the doors, it would lower the windows, and it would open the moonroof all at the same time. And I would hit that button as soon as I came out the door, about oh, 200 feet away from the car. And by the time I got to the car, about 20 seconds later, whatever it took, 15 seconds with all the groceries in the cart, pop the trunk open, put the stuff in the trunk, slam the trunk shut, get rid of the cart, get to the car. The car now had been wide open to the elements for about a minute. And all that heat that was in that car had to have been, what, 160 degrees, maybe more. It's all radiated out of the car. And uh, because the windows are down, the only windows that can now radiate heat would be the windshield and the back window. But in Palm Desert, what you do, and I'm sure in Florida too, you look for a shady spot if you can to park. Or number two, you park with the windshield faced away from the sun. So if the sun is over there, you park pointing the other direction. So only the rear window gets the sunshine coming in, not the windshield. Because you don't want the sun shining on your driver's seat because it would be hot. So you want the sun shining from the back of the car and these little tips on the that you learn in the desert pretty quick so anyway within a minute uh that car is, is down to one down to 115 hopefully a little breeze coming through it get in that car turn on the engine and within 30 seconds the air conditioning is taking over now you're closing up all the windows shutting the uh, moon roof closing it down and letting the air condition bring you back to reality so uh i love the heat uh at nighttime you come out of costco at eight in the evening just before they close and uh, you're walking to your car and there's still heat radiating radiating off the pavement it's pitch dark all around you and there's sun uh, heat radiating off the pavement i love that i just love it i don't like the chills uh i hate that i just hate it i've had a lifetime of that and uh, that's another reason i love cruising in the caribbean <laughs> <laughs> Let's say hi to Tommy Eaton. He's here. Tommy, how are you? Oh, hi, Bruce, and all 81 in Jacksonville, Florida today. But today's subject? Oh, oh, I know. I need a bathing suit unless I'm on a meet and greet uh, on a certain beach in Rio, laughing out loud. Yeah, there are certain essentials you got to bring on board a cruise. And I was thinking about, uh, well, you know, there's the standard stuff that we all think about. Then I thought, what about the unique stuff, the one off stuff? And I know some of you folks have got great tips and ideas. This is aimed at you folks out there who've never been on a cruise before. Listen to these wise words that are coming out of here. Uh, we have some here. Uh, what you want to pack on a cruise that you might not think of. Uh, it really can make a difference. We'll get to that shortly. Let's say hi to everybody. Sea Keeper. Hi, Bruce. And everyone, 83 here in Tequista, South Florida. Cloudy, slight breeze, and quite enjoyable. A packing question today. I like that. I have some views on the subject. Who doesn't? Welcome, my friend. It's great to have you back, as always. Tracy Dunlap. Hi, Bruce and everyone. Nice and sunny day here in Naples. 89 degrees, uh, but feels hotter. 
<laughs> Tracy Dunlap, Florida is well represented on your channel today. Oh, I get the Floridians here. There's no doubt about that. Seakeeper, this looks like a Florida participants convention. Seakeeper says, goes on to say, but Florida people are nice people. I think so. I, I haven't met a bad one yet. Tracy Dunlap, yep, it does, Keeper. We are lucky. Uh, we are lucky close to the ports. Paul Wilgus, hi, Bruce and all 80 and very humid here in Virginia. It's eating up in Virginia. Welcome back, Paul. Valerie F., thanks for this. I am cruising on May 20th. I hope all is nice. I'm hoping too. I think on May 20th, you should have pretty nice weather, Valerie. Welcome to the uh, channel. If you're brand new, I'm glad you're here. Tell us, uh, uh, watching, she says she's watching from Alabama. The high here is 89 degrees. I just saw her second message. Uh, <clears throat> tell us, what cruise are you going on? What ship are you going on and where are you headed? And uh, we, we'd love to know. This is great, Valerie. PJ Drayton is also here today. Greetings from Omaha. Cool and drizzling 80s for the weekend, though. Okay, it's coming. It's coming. Scott Batchley. Hi, Bruce and all. West Coast checking in. Nice day in Ventura, California. 65. Kind of another 10 degrees, don't we? We need 10 more. Just 10 more. Uh, hold on there, Scott. Randy Lucas. I'm here. I'm here. Greetings, Bruce and all. Beautiful sunny day here in Paradise, California. Today is a high 74. See? That 10 more degrees. Yahoo! Absolutely. Welcome, Randy. Welcome back. Scott Batchley, um, uh, NCL Bliss, uh, uh, you know, oh, the NCL Bliss arrived in New York today. We'll be on her. I'll be on her in four, 142 days. Yeah, man. Uh, we're about to get all kinds of press out of that ship. From there, uh, Debbie Manuel. Hi, Bruce and everyone. All sun and a high of 81 today in Chico, California. It's a lie. Uh, we'll be warmer before trivia time tonight. <laughs> right on. Uh, Alesh. Al Akesh y Yadov is here. Yakesh, I think I've, I've seen, I don't have any words from you, but I've got your thing. Oh, here we go. He's saying, hey, Bruce, I have a question for you. Why are you raising money? Oh, it's simple. Uh, this is all I do for a living. This is my job. This is what I do. That, that's, how, that's how it works. I, either I get paid advertising from YouTube, which I'm not, and I'm waiting, uh, or I survive from, uh, from donations from my viewers or uh, sales from my merchandise. Or if I did affiliate marketing, or if I did uh, meet and greet cruises where the cruise line pays me a bunch of money to go on a cruise ship, which hasn't happened yet, it's not working yet. Uh, this is this is my job. That's why I'm raising money. It's it's called bills. You know, we all have them, and we got to pay them. Debbie Manuel, dang, forgot to re uh, research PayPal. We'll try to sign up if get the chance before trivia. Will you keep dancing if you get PayPal donations like you do with super chats? <laughs> Hope so. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, of course, even more so. I mean, it's worth it. It's worth, it's, it's worth even worth more to me than than a than a super chat. Of course, Debbie. Of course. Oh, that's funny. Uh, Randy Lucas. Ah, uh, Akash. Why YouTube hasn't monetized him yet? Yeah, I haven't been monetized. And I gotta say, even if I were monetized, just to be you know frank, uh, right now we're averaging about. Um, Oh, what am I averaging? About fourteen to sixteen hundred views a day. Uh, I reached about two thousand views a day a month ago, and then now we're in this range. I think we're a little lower right now because of that one video of mine that was leading the charge uh, really backed off. It's come back, but not all the way back. And I think because we're into spring and coming into summer, um, uh, fewer people are inside watching YouTube videos all day long. So this will affect the numbers somewhat. Uh, but it is also seasonal. Uh, you get the summer and the uh, the fall, the winter, you know that type of thing. But anyway, if I were monetized right now with YouTube advertising, um, the rates that the advertising pays, uh, I would guess that I would be making about $7 a day, maybe, uh, which is not enough to live on. But, you know, it adds up. When you think about, I think I've lost probably $1,000 or more uh, from YouTube not paying me to be monetized the last, what, 73 days counting. Uh, it's at least a thousand, might even more, um, and it and that just you know add, add, it just adds up when you when you have that kind of a deficit over time, it, the bills don't stop coming. You know the the internet people want their money. Uh, what are you going to do? So <clears throat> reaching out for support is uh, I'm upfront about it. I'm not paid by the cruising business. I'm not a travel agent. I don't get commissions for talking to you, trying to sell you something that uh, is represented by Norwegian or Royal Caribbean or anybody else. Uh, I am a, sort of a self-employed guy uh, who is surviving off of his growing subscriber base. And so as time goes by, I'm hoping to reach 2,000, 3,000, 5,000, 10,000 subscribers. And um, a, a proportion of subscribers and viewers you know, do help out the creator. It's just the way it is. Some do, some don't. And uh, hopefully I'll have more contributors as the days go by where I'll actually make a living. 
<laughs> doing this. Getting rich? I don't think so. I don't think I'm going to be a Casey Neistat, but uh, paying my own way would be kind of nice. So, you know, we'll just take it any way we can get it. Uh, <laughs> I just saw a super chat come in. I'll just see who this is. Uh, first of all, uh, loves, uh, uh, let's see your, uh, loves cruising is here. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Applied for global entry today. Uh, loves cruising, applied for global. Is that, is that, I'm not sure what that means. Uh, loves travel, loves cruising. Um, uh, loves to travel. Hi, high, 80 and a few big puffy sprinkle clouds. Survived yesterday. We had straight line wind and rain. Okay, hopefully that's gone. Loves to travel. I, want, I hope you're out of there. Paul Wilgus, Bruce, when are you going to show up for one of your, when are you going to show up one of your shirts? Not too long from now. Trust me, it's coming. Valerie F., hello. Hi, hi Valerie. Uh, Nina, hi, Bruce and all. Cold in Sweden tonight. Oh, no. Loves to travel. Should be able to relax today and watch the show. Cam Wilson, hey, everybody. Randy Lucas, yo, Cam. Uh, loves cruising tinted windows help too. Yes, that's true. And I, I did have those loves to travel. Hi, Cam. Randy Lucas. Hi, Nina. Hey, Paul W. Uh, Rand, uh, Paul Wilgus going. Hi, Randy. Debbie Manuel. Hi, Randy. Are you acc uh, acclim acclimated to our time zone and weather again yet? Are you, you know, all the way back? Valerie F. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, Nina Frank. Hi, Randy. We uh, Valerie F. is saying she's going on the allure of the seas. She's going to Nassau, Costa Maya, Cozumel, and Rotan. Right on. Um, and correction, Costamaya, Costamaya, right on. Uh, I'm wondering if Valerie, is this your very first cruise? Are you are you a first timer? Uh, uh, let us know. Uh, Thomas Henry, hello everyone. Coming to you via the Norwegian Star, just about to pass the Straits of Gibraltar. Maybe a little distracted. It's 11:16 p.m. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, I loved having uh, my. I had a day visit on the rock, the rock of Gibraltar. My daughter and I, uh, just we just walked around. We had no tour, nothing. Didn't even do the cable car. We just walked the downtown. Because we lived in the Cayman Islands, we were used to being in a British protectorate, a UK protectorate territory, which the which Gibraltar is. And it just brought it all back to us. It was just fantastic. We loved it. Uh, it was a great a tour, walk around, just to see, you know, people watch. Really enjoyed it. Um, I picked up a, uh, a little bottle of uh, Listerine. I was, I was out of mouthwash at that time. So I bought a little bottle of Listerine. It was one of these maybe eight ounce, 10 ounce bottles. It's like a Mickey, actually. It's like the size of a Mickey. Anyway, um, on the back, it, it, uh, it had the distribution label and all that, the, you know, the typical. And because it was distributed through the UK, it had on the back there Gibraltar printed on the thing. I still have that bottle. I never threw it away. It's a souvenir. So I used up the Listerine years ago, but I now refill it with mouthwash whenever I go on a, a little visit to my daughter's. I need a little portable one for a few days. I take it with me. And on my cruising, when I go cruising for a one-week cruise, I bring that bottle with me. And I still have that Gibraltar souvenir. That was just, you know, happenstance uh, to have been purchased there. And uh, if, I, if I hadn't read the label on the back and seen the, uh, the print where it was distributed through, I'd have thrown it away years ago, but yeah, keep it. Reminds me of the cruise and, and the area. Loved Gibraltar, really enjoyed it. Thomas Henry, beautiful, cloudless, sunny day today in Cadiz. And uh, uh, Jerry's tour had some very good sherry tasting. Yeah, I can imagine. That's all right. Thomas Henry, woohoo, I won $200 on the money machine on the star. Bit the key through the hole. <laughs> ah, that's the machine that's rigged. And you won. <laughs> That's awesome stuff, man. Ah, that's fantastic. Way to go, Thomas Henry. Nina, Frank, congrats, Thomas. Debbie Manuel, awesome, Thomas. Hope trip was wonderful. And then he sends me a super chat for 20 bucks. You got to love that. <laughs> Sharing the wealth. That's awesome, Thomas. Uh, here's a little bit for a hot dog and a drink, plus, <laughs> plus fuel to get to Costco. Thank you very much. I, I'm taking it from wherever I can get it from. Thank you, guys. That is awesome. Nina Frank, Silk Thomas. This is slick. Slick, Thomas. Slick, she's saying. Debbie Manuel. Yay, Thomas. You made them dance again. Thanks to you. <laughs> yes, it's been great, Debbie. That is fantastic. I uh, love it. Thomas, will, will YouTube pay retro when they finally monetize you? No, they will not. No, sir. Oh, my gosh. Uh, the reality, Thomas, is that um, the advertising, you know, is, is it runs before a video. So uh, if you're watching, you know, this uh, live, uh, you, you, it was before um, Feb 20th. Uh, before then, uh, before, when I would go live, there would be like a 30 second or a 45 second commercial that you guys had to kind of sit there and watch until you saw me talking on a, on a delay. 
and if anyone's watching this video tonight or any video I've made in the last you know eight months, uh, there used to be an ad on some of them, not every single time, but there would be an ad on occasional videos for 30 seconds, a minute, whatever the amount of time was. And in some cases, my longer videos, either a 20 minute regular video that I would have done for say vacations to go.com, one of those long ones, or this kind of video, hour and whatever minutes long that I'm going to be yapping away here, it might have commercial breaks in the middle on the reruns. Um, but today, there are no commercials on any of my videos. So you go to my channel and watch video after video after video. They're all free. You can just watch them as long as you want, you know, go somewhere else, come back. I get zip. I get nada. And so does YouTube. YouTube makes nothing from me. Uh, I'm not making them any money either by them not monetizing my channel. But they're doing this with probably 2 million of us. There's 2 million channels like mine, I'm guessing. That are not monetized and we're just sitting here uh, working for free or not working at all now i have the hunch that some creators are not are not putting product on their channel until they get re-monetized or others are you know instead of doing three videos a week maybe they're doing one perhaps i am doing what i've always done i'm doing eight live streams a week uh, from monday to friday and including saturday uh, i occasionally throw an extra video in there that i'll make you know make one or two videos here and there and just pop them out pop them on there um, and then I'm doing all my homework as I always do to get ready for my shows. And then I'm doing my uh, in-between work uh, to promote on Facebook, to promote this channel on Twitter, to promote it on uh, Pinterest, uh, Instagram, uh, you know, all the work I'm doing. And then to respond to viewers uh, who, who contact me uh, through messages on the channel or, or, or through Facebook, you know, I'm always working the, the show, the channel, uh, but it's all for free as far as, YouTube is concerned. They're they're not paying me to do it, but they are carrying me on YouTube at their expense. So can I complain? Really? No, not for that. But it would be nice if they were to um, uh, monetize me because I, I'm convinced that my viewers, uh, those of you who are here now, those of you who watch After Hours, uh, are the kind of viewers that YouTube's advertisers would love to send a message to. Uh, whether it's for a new car or whether it's for a shaver or whether it's for underarm viewer. I don't care what the product is. Uh, there's a million products that can be aimed at eyeballs that watch my product that could make YouTube and I income. But I'm stuck here in this uh, you know, dead zone now for 73 days, open-ended death. It's like uh, Chinese water torture that you never know when it's going to stop. They just they keep extending the date about when they say they're going to re-monetize channels. And it was supposed to be a week after the 20th of February. Then it was the end of uh, April, I think, or end of March, then end of April. And now we're hearing the end of June. <laughs> so we're talking almost two more months, 50, 57 more days. Uh, maybe that they'll be done. And then uh, whatever the ad rates are at that time and whatever the numbers are at that time, will theoretically kick back in again and do i get my four five six seven bucks eight eight dollars a day i don't know it varies every day depending on how many ads are running uh how many uh how many videos i've got going um you know i never know from day to day what what i get and it takes about 48 hours for the results to come to me uh for the analytics to show uh so it'll, so today i could have told you what did i make on sunday from advertising sort of thing but I can't tell you that because they don't even show what the rates are these days for those who are getting paid. I have no idea. So I'm in the dark. So uh, I just uh, I let you folks know the, the picture, the real picture. Here's the deal. This is exactly what's going on. And here's where I stand. And that is why you can see how grateful I am to receive donations from my viewers. $10 from West Morris and $20 here. Uh, and that $50 donation overnight from New Zealand, I mean, my goodness, uh, this is, you know, this is a godsend, an absolute godsend, and I appreciate it. <laughs> as, as you can see, I think I'm being sincere. Thank you very much. I need it. So it really does help. I, I work so many hours doing this. I can't do a day job. I can't uh, go get a job outdoors somewhere uh, working for somebody. Uh, I'd rather do this as my job. Anyway, I love this. Uh, so if I can turn this into an income, uh, this is it for me. This is what it's all about. And the ultimate for me, as you folks know, 
meet and greet cruises. Uh, let's get together on cruise ships from time to time and uh, let's have some fun because that, that's the way to go. And if I can broadcast at sea and then broadcast at home, come back back and forth, oh, that, that's it right there. Uh, being paid to travel uh, is kind of how I view it. Uh, that would be something else, that, just something else. All right, let's see what's going on here. Um, <laughs> you made them dance. Uh, uh, Thomas uh, talked about the retro. Don't forget thumbs ups. Tommy Eaton is saying, if you like Bruce, thank you for that. Uh, Valerie F., my fourth cruise. Okay, Valerie, so I'm not talking to a new, new newbie. Have you, uh, the Roatan uh, uh, port that you're going to go to, I wanted to mention that. I saw you're going to go to Roatan. And uh, I've been getting mixed reviews from viewers about Roatan. So if you're if you're going there and you're going to be on a cruise, uh, sorry, let me start again. If you're going to go to Roatan, and you're going to be on an organized tour, uh, you should be just fine. Uh, if you're going to be hopping into a bus and going somewhere for a viewing or whatever, great. If you're going to Roatan and you're just going to get off the ship and walk around a little bit, uh, I caution you because it is mayhem. Uh, it is third world. Um, and, and well, I said it's a mix of third world. It's like Western world, third world, all rolled into one. Uh, you've got folks there who are doing rather nicely, and then you've got folks there who are suffering and are trying to make a buck off of anyone they can. Uh, some folks will just have a, you know, they might have a monkey that they'll let you take a picture with them holding the monkey, or they let you hold the monkey a couple of bucks. These are people that are they need cash. Uh, but be careful to not go off the beaten path uh, because you may run into folks who don't have the best intentions in hand uh, because they're really desperate. So. I caution you on that, okay? Uh, because I saw that location. <clears throat> Anybody else have any thoughts on her spots? Let us know. Uh, but Valerie, I think you're gonna have a great time. <laughs> it sounds like you're gonna have a great time. Loves cruising. Global entry is expedited entry through customs. Okay, it's like the Nexus program. Uh, it's going to be needed next year when I go on uh, on of the larger ships, Allure and Harmony. Oh, very good, very good. I know the Nexus program, I had that. Um, Back in the late 90s when I was living in uh, Cayman Islands, I was in the U.S. all the time because I would fly in and go to Canada or fly in, head to the Bahamas, and then fly back to the States, back to Cayman, and always going through customs. And that was quite handy to have that. Uh, way to go. I love screwing. That should be good when you get that. Thomas Henry, is that is that Randy that always does the thumbs down? Uh, <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, but someone gives me thumbs down. I don't know why, but for whatever reason, I get one every day, at least one. Um, the rotten ship internet is very slow tonight. Bruce has a frequent circle going around right over his glasses. <laughs> yes, sir. The lights of Africa are starboard. Uh, that would be off on the l l left side. Uh, not much port side yet. The corner wrap uh, around balcony is terrific. Oh, man, that's fantastic. Because yeah, he's at the back of the ship. So he sees Africa over here. He's got uh, Gibraltar over there. Oh, that's fabulous. You're, I think you're heading into the Mediterranean. That's that's why. That is awesome, Thomas. L uh, Randy Lucas said, Debbie E., we're back on board with the Pacific time. That's right. That's right. Uh, um, Randy Thomas, uh, uh, it ain't me. I swear I'm not doing any stellar. I'm not giving him thumbs down. Thomas Henry, we have a tour from uh, Malaga tomorrow to Gibraltar. Oh, great. Uh, I have a prepaid ticket to the top of the rock. Looking forward to the long day tomorrow. Fantastic. That is awesome, uh, Thomas. Uh, make sure you take lots of photos. Uh, <laughs> Thomas saying, well, I must be Mrs. Lucas giving the thumbs down then. He's laughing out loud. Who is doing it? He's wondering. Peter Heckham, a global entry or Nexus card is a fast track card for crossing the U.S.-Canada border. Saves loads of time coming in and out of the country. We have one, and it works great. Right on, sir. Tommy Eaton would be cool if you got uh, 200 subscribers by Father's Day. Oh, my, that would be something. Valerie F., yes, I am very concerned about Roatan. Uh, thank you so much for that information, Bruce. Uh, Thomas Henry, what is your concern, Valerie? The doc, uh, the doc is missing. <laughs> yeah, it's just the third worlders, um, you know, uh, Got to be careful. There are, there, are both, there are some folks there who claim to be cab drivers, but they're not. Uh, they're actually uh, private individuals just driving their own vehicles. And you got to you gotta be careful because if you're, uh, you know, um, you get taken to the wrong part of the island, uh, you know, you could be, who knows? I, I just, I don't want to say it. I, I, I worry about it. So anyway, um, yes, be careful. And, uh, you know, if it's too sketchy looking, don't even get off the ship. Just, just don't bother. Stay on the ship and enjoy all the amenities there. 
and you'll be fine. Um, yeah, today's topic, I was going to uh, want to bring this up, talking about top unique items. These are must-have items you should pack on board a cruise ship when you're taking a cruise. Uh, for those folks who are watching this show, um, maybe not today, but uh, tonight, tomorrow, next week, uh, six months from now, you've never been on a cruise before and you're trying to figure out what to do on a, uh, as a new cruiser or a newbie or you know somebody that's going on a cruise, tell them to watch this show and uh, learn a few little tidbits, little pieces of advice. Um, the one, uh, one of the items that I recommend you take, and, and almost every YouTuber says it, uh, th those of us who you know try to give advice to, to new cruisers out there, uh, grab yourself a multi-power plug, one of those uh, power cords uh, where you have all kinds of plugins. Um, there, there are now um, you can now pick up at dollar stores and at uh, any Home Depot, uh, Lowe's, Costco's, um, Walmart's. I mean, any retailer of note will sell these. But go to the big ones where you can get the best pricing, like Walmart and uh, dollar stores. Pick up a multi-power socket, the kind that not only lets you plug in electronics like a computer, but also would let you plug in your uh, your iPhone uh, or your cameras for those little small slots. Uh, get one of those kinds of power bars that, that allow like five different uh, plugs. Three might be for a 110 outlet and two of them would be, or two or three of them might be for phones and cameras, This these kinds of electronic gadgets. Uh, Cruise ships that are brand, brand new, uh, like the Bliss and the uh, the uh, uh, Symphony of the Seas, uh, these ships, the Horizon for Carnival, these ships will probably have more plugins available now than cruise ships from 10, 20 years ago. But there's a lot of cruise ships out there that are still plying the seas, and they're great. Uh, ships that have been around 15, 20 years, they've been refurbished a couple of times. They still only have maybe one plug in the bedroom or two and maybe one in the sh in the bathroom really meant for a razor or a or a curling iron uh it's just just not enough plugs to get everything uh, charged up because in the evening you may want to bring your own clock you may want to plug in your phone at night to charge it up you may want to plug in a, a a particular camera or you want to plug in your uh an ipad or a laptop um and you've got five or six seven items that need charging but you can only charge one or two at a time so uh, bring your own uh, multi-unit uh, um, uh, uh, jack, you know, uh, power cord, and it can be as simple as, as, as a, you know, power cord with five plugins, uh, or it could be something as sophisticated as three plugins and two device plugins, and uh, now you can just you can plug in everything. And uh, <clears throat> when you're out on, <coughs> on a shore excursion or you're out at dinner tonight, you know, you're out at dinner in the main dining room, you're going to be out of the room for a couple of hours. Uh, plug everything in, and then when you get back two hours later, you know, practically everything's charged up for you, and you're good to go. Uh, this is also handy whether you're in a hotel room, of course, you're going to Vegas or you're whatever, uh, and this way you can keep all your electronics in one central spot where the power cord is rather than where, where did I leave the phone and where did I plug in this and where did I plug in that? Here it's all together in one locale might be the way to go. So that that's an idea. My wife uh, wanted me to show you something that uh, she thought was a great idea, and it's right here. Hard to see. Um, this here looks like a giant hockey puck, <laughs> being Canadian, but it isn't. Actually, what this is, it has a little button here on the side. I push it, and a light comes on. I don't know if you'll see that, but there's a light that comes on. If you push the light again, it becomes even more intense, and if you push it a third time, it becomes a flasher. And um, this is handy if you're uh, in, in any kind of trouble uh, or you're in your room and you, um, you're looking under the bed before checkout, before checking out of your room on the cruise and you're wondering if I leave anything under there, turn this baby on. It acts like a flashlight and you can look down below to see if you left anything behind. But there's more to this uh, unit. Uh, give it a little twist and it does this. And now hit that button right here and it acts as a little lantern. And if you hit it again, it acts as a brighter lantern, and you hit it one more time, it acts as a strobe light for distress. So uh, uh, kind of a neat unit. It's great for camping, uh, of course, uh, being it operates on a battery. Um, the other thing that I like about it is it has a, a metal hook that you can hang it from here, uh, or uh, it also has this hook that comes out here like this. Like a, It works on a closet. You hang it on the closet rack, 
and you turn it, you can turn it on. So now if you're in a closet, it's kind of dark in there, you turn on your light, uh, especially if you're, uh, you're looking for something in the closet and your better half is asleep and you don't want to disturb. Uh, getting up in the middle of the night, you grab this baby, especially if you're in a room that you had never been in before. It's your first night on the cruise and you're, you're not sure where the shoes are on the floor. You have this on your nightstand beside you and you can look around and see where, where did I leave the stuff. Um, oh, last thing I'll mention is on the back here, that, that's a magnet. It'll, it'll just click on to steel onto a metal side. So a great way to, uh, to uh, you know, fix it to a, to a metal wall perhaps or a door and then just turn on the button and you've got, you've got a source of light. Great little unit. Um, these are available everywhere, uh, you know, um, uh, certainly at dollar stores and Lowe's and Home Hardware and Home Depot, these kinds of guys. Uh, th they come in all kinds of shapes and sizes too. But this one here, just a, a very small portable unit great to uh, to have with you for uh, you know all kinds of uses again it's one of those things you pack that you don't really need to uh, go on a cruise per se but boy is it handy when at three in the morning you wake up and you just feel like you got to go to the bathroom or uh, you just want to sit up for a while and you want to you know head over to the balcony look out the balcony in your room well you don't want to turn on all the lights in the room because you're 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 going to get it real good in the next morning if you, you know, you know what I'm saying. So uh, grab that unit right there and uh, you won't disturb anyone. And uh, you can check for <laughs> luggage on the floor or a beer can you've tried to toss in the garbage can and you missed. And you want to step on it and uh, cut yourself or, or kick it around. Um, other items to take on board. Duct tape. You heard me. Duct tape. Uh, bring a roll of duct tape. It is the most incredible, versatile material known to man. Uh, from one feature uh, you might not even think about is uh, you're, uh, you're getting dressed to go out to dinner and uh, the guys are putting on their jackets and on the shoulders are, is all this lint and hair and stuff. Grab some duct tape. Take a strip out, roll it backwards around your fingers and then it acts as it picks up all this lint and uh, you're uh, you're ready to roll. So way to go there. Duct tape is also an emergency patch up tool. Uh, your luggage arrives uh, in your room and someone beat the crap out of it. Uh, you know, and a latch is busted. Uh, when you're going home, uh, you know, you got it packed and now you duct tape that thing shut and tape over the latch and uh, it'll hold it together. You know, you can do that. Uh, someone kicked in your suitcase and there's a hole in it or a, a real gash in it, duct tape it up. Uh, you you got to make, you don't have to buy any on board or from a third world country, you got it with you. You're good to go. Um, all kinds of uses for the product in your room. Sometimes your closet doors are a little shaky or they move a little bit. You duct tape them shut. Uh, there's all kinds of uses for this stuff. Uh, It'll, it'll, it'll shut down squeaks, noises, and rattles on anything if you know how to use it. And so duct tape has a million uses, even on a vacay, and uh, take it with you. Absolutely take it with you. Uh, I'm just going to say, uh, see if there's anyone saying hi to me and making sure I'm up to speed here. Uh, uh, people have been writing in, so I don't want to uh, I don't want to miss any of the messages and be too late on these. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, <laughs> Oh my goodness! Oh, there's all kinds of messages coming in. Pardon me. Uh, here we go. Yes, I'm very sure about the rotation. Um, Thomas Henry, what is your concern? Dog is missing. Valerie, yes, uh, Thomas. Uh, I'm talking about Rotan. Valerie's talking about Rotan. Thomas, exactly. I keep her. I keep hearing mixed messages about us being able to dock there. But after what Bruce said, I I just may stay around the port area. Uh, Debbie Manuel, isn't that right side of the ship? Starboard. Uh, starboard is this side. If you're going forward. And uh, uh, this is the port side, right? Oh, oh yeah, okay. Oh, very good point. Yeah, you're saying, no, oh, yeah, I hear it. Debbie, you're correcting me here. Uh, left side during the scuba dive class should have been on a... <laughs> uh, yes, Debbie, you're right. A starboard is the right side if you're going forward. But if he's heading, if he's heading into the Mediterranean, all right, and he's looking out the back of the ship, he's looking at the Atlantic, right? So the Atlantic is, the Atlantic is down there, all right? Uh, this side, the Africa side, is starboard, and the port side is Gibraltar because he's heading to the Mediterranean. I think I got that right. Uh, I hope I'm right. Thomas Henry, anyone speak Arabic? A large Arabic sign on shore is approaching on the port side. 
hands up uh i don't know i i, I don't know sir i can't tell you um uh, and, and I would know how to uh, help you on that. If you took a photo of it, you'd have to replicate it on Google. How would you do that? I have no idea. Um, no idea what to, what to tell you there. Uh, Thomas Henry, yes, Debbie, starboard is the right side. I have deck eight corner suite that has a balcony facing the rear and wraps around the port starboard side. Great viewing. There you go. Tracy Dunlap, speak some, but don't read it well, Thomas. <laughs> Scott Batchley, no search protection. They are not allowed, right? Debbie Manuel, a mini flashlight is a must easier to uh easier to even go to the bathroom at night without waking up entire room with the overhead light especially with kids yes with children on in the light in the room for sure thomas henry that thing is the sunrises have all been just a hair to the port side of the ship bow so i can't quite see them oh <laughs> uh, yeah paul will i guess that's what i heard too scott um uh, and i think he's talking about uh surge protection exactly charles sea keeper I used to enjoy walking off the ship in Rotan and into the town before they built that glitzy tourist trap on the dock. Uh, don't I don't even go ashore there anymore. I've been there, done that. Don't need it, right? I, I'm here. I hear you there. Uh, Seakeeper, good point. Thomas Henry, uh, we leave the bathroom light on all night to make it easier. Pamela Jordan, hi, Bruce and everyone. I'm late, but I made it sunny. 82 Fahrenheit here in Iva, South Carolina. 82? I think it was a week or two ago. You're in the 40s. The way to come up there, that's fantastic, Pamela. Welcome to the show. Um, great to have you back. It's fantastic. Thomas Henry, I dropped the uh, the uh, uh, Norwegian Pamela Canal group Facebook today. They are really overdoing their negativity, okay? I hear you. Um, they're, um, you know, they're fighting out there trying to get what they want to get. Uh, some, are, some are just taking the credit and leaving it at that because they just don't think they can go any further. Others are going to legals. Uh, we'll have to see how that plays out. Debbie Manuel, oh, that is also a great idea, Jen. Uh, where did she get that, Bruce? This thing right here, <coughs> I have to admit, Jen used to be in property management. Uh, she used to manage a 32-story office tower in downtown Calgary. And um, uh, she was in charge of uh, all these building operators that uh, you know kept the building running. I think there were like 30 of these guys. Um, and uh, this unit here uh, was given to them uh, by an outfit, uh, which uh, is it's part of what are they called? They're called Boderas. Anyway, there's a logo there. It's a corporate logo. Uh, this is used as a marketing thing. So what this group did is they bought a bunch of these things and gave them away to these building operators because they have escalators and all kinds of equipment and all these office towers. Great promotion. So Jen got her hands on one of these. We've used it all. All kinds of times, an absolutely fantastic unit, but they're they're available. They're not that expensive. I think under ten bucks, and a great little unit, absolutely fabulous. Uh, make sure though before you leave with the unit that you take an extra battery, uh, just in case the battery in there is on its last legs. You never know. Uh, Wendy Thompson, uh, I'm late, uh, but you're here, Wendy. Uh, Thomas Henry, I posted on the um, uh, Facebook Latitudes about a seventy five percent sale on star labeled items and the gift shops closed 11 p.m on uh may the 2nd i saw they took my post with the pics of some items and turned it negative oh i see yeah so they're 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 good turning on you because you you had something positive to say about it yeah i i understand i get it well you know, yeah there there's a uh, you know they're they're uh maybe maybe they felt that it had nothing to do with the panama cruise and they didn't want to have anything to do with it i i'm just speculating i don't know the rules of that page um uh, they've been good to me. I have to. I have to give credit where the credit is due. I, I covered that story as you all know. Uh, as soon as I heard about that Norwegian Sun story, I started covering it, and I was on that story for about 10, 12, 14 days. Um, and they were very kind to me. They allowed me to post on their site about whatever I was doing, and a number of them have become followers of my channel. And I, I'm glad they have, and I'm hoping that for everybody's sake. There's a positive rev res rev resolution coming out for everyone. Uh, but I, I also know deep down inside that some will be satisfied, some will be moderately satisfied, some will be moderately unsatisfied, and others will be vehemently unsatisfied. And that's the way it's going to be. And I'm sorry that it is that way, but that is also the world in which we live. But um, yeah, I'm disappointed in Norwegian overall as to how they've handled that story, as you all know, because I've done rant after rant about this. Um, and uh, that's how that is. Excuse me. Uh, Tracy Dunlop, I was amazed when 
I went on Carnival Victory a couple months ago. Uh, older ship uh, brought multi-plug for devices. Didn't need it, she says. I didn't need it. Our room had tons of outlets for devices. Fantastic. You know, once in a while you, you get lucky, and uh, that's great news. Uh, uh, you know, they're, they're, I don't know how they do, uh, uh, you know, uh, major uh, uh, dry dock uh, work, whether they can even add additional plugs to old rooms. I don't know how that whole thing works, but uh, that's great for you, Tracy. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, and, you know, better safe than sorry, right? You had it. You brought it with you. And if you needed it, you had it. And so way to go. Thomas Henry, <clears throat> I saw it as a great sale. <clears throat> And yeah, they're spending way too much on the shops. Wife has four thousand dollars in new jewelry. <laughs> Thomas, maybe they're just upset that you're giving too, Norwegian too much money. I don't know. I, I can't say. Wendy Thompson, hi all. Rain today. Last night was thunder, lightning, loud. Worked on keeping um, our don donating boxes today. Right on, Wendy. Welcome back, Debbie Manuel. Duct tape can fix shoes and pants, and keep curtains closed if needed. That's another thing. Exactly. When you're down in the Caribbean and the sun comes up at six in the morning, whatever the amount, whatever that time is, and you're on that side of the ship where the sun is coming up, uh, it is bright and it's really early in the morning and you just need that extra hour or two of rest, especially if you've flown in from another time zone. This duct tape uh, keeps those curtains shut tight, whether it's on the edges or whether in the middle. Uh, that little sliver of light can drive you nuts, especially if it lands right there, right in your eye, and it's moving across your forehead as you're sleeping. Not fun. So having that duct tape to be able to do that, even that function is worth it. Uh, some people use duct tape for the shower curtains in their rooms because in their bathrooms because the uh, the uh, the sink is right here and the toilet is right there and and water hits the floor and they don't they don't want any wetness any moisture on the floor cuz they're afraid, afraid of slipping and falling so they'll use duct tape on one side of the shower curtain uh, the you know the one they decide they don't go in and they tape it right to the right to the unit and that's tight and then the other side they slide over and you know that solves the problem there's all kinds of uses for this stuff it's just amazing it's a miracle product uh, Desi is here. Hi, Bruce and all. Hi, Desi. How are you? Welcome back. Uh, Thomas Henry, I have 37 watching and only 24 thumbs ups. Where are the rest of you people? <laughs> Thomas is looking out for me. I appreciate that very much. Let's take a look at thumbs ups. Uh, I'll go on my other page here. I see 24 thumbs ups. And I thank you all very much for giving me thumbs ups. If you can spare them, I'll take them too. Helps with the algorithms. Absolutely. Uh, that's almost great. Wendy Thompson, a sign says, welcome to Tokyo. That's the sign says. Uh, Pam, <laughs> Thomas Henry, Debbie, Debbie duct tape and Windex will solve all problems. That's right. Windex on any cut, you know, just like, remember the, my Greek wedding? Oh yeah. Yeah. My big fat Greek wedding. Uh, Windex solves everything. A sea keeper. I read Arabic, but can't speak or understand it. Is that dyslexia? I, I don't know. <laughs> I can't. I, uh, laughing out loud, Wendy. Thomas loves it. Um, Thomas Henry, yes, I have a three-plug multi that converts 240 to 115 and has four UB, a USB ports also. Working well to power up PC, printer, and charging camera, phones, etc. There you go. This is the modern world in which we live, and uh, these units are fantastic. Thomas Henry says, Amazon.com solves all. The star... Uh, has the U.S. outlet too far from the desk balcony area to be useful? Interesting. Uh, Peter Heckema, Bruce, last cruise uh, we're on, we had our power bar taken away. They don't want passengers overloading wall plugs. Isn't that something? Uh, and yet, on some cruise ships, they provide them or they'll provide an extension cord to help you out. So it really is uh, an amazing uh, you know thing going on. Isn't that something? Uh, Peter, very interesting point. Thomas Henry, you really need the EU power plug, which doesn't work too well in the U.S. hotels, laugh out loud. Love cruising. That's why I like inside cabins. There you go. Uh, because of the sun, uh, the issue there. Seakeeper, WD-40, pack it. If it squeaks, spray it. If it should move, but it's stuck, spray it. If it use it to shine your shoes, a drop behind each ear makes an alluring fragrance, fragrance you alone will be wearing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I got to say, if you have a little WD behind your ears, they're going to call you one smooth operator. I'll tell you that. <laughs> oh, 
Ah, yes, this the the gentleman uh, the gentleman over there stands out from all the rest. He's really something. <laughs> Smooth as silk. Oh my goodness. I love that one. Tra Thomas loves it. Uh, Tracy uh, Bolio is here. The stewards must uh, must uh, hair when people use duct tape. They must hate it, or I guess when they use duct tape. I, I don't know. I mean, you use it and then you, you know, when you're done your cruise, you gather it all up, put it in a ball, throw it away, and that's the end of that. But uh, if these ships are squeakers, uh, we gotta we gotta solve that problem. There's all there is to it. Uh, <laughs> Wendy Thompson, potato chip bag clips. They work. They work too. To keep, work really well to keep curtains together. I was going to mention that these oversize, what they call potato chip clothes clothes hanger type uh, clips, fantastic. Um, you use those on the deck. So when you're uh, lying on a uh, lounger and you're putting a towel down, uh, you clip them with these big clips to the top of your lounger and to the side of your lounger. Bring like four. And the wind doesn't blow the towel away. There you go. And it's another way, hopefully, someone won't mess with your lounger when you're taking a dip in the pool. Uh, but then again, they might steal your clips. So hopefully not. Uh, but those clips do work wonders also for the curtains. Absolutely. Uh, good point. Uh, thank you, Wendy. Uh, Thomas Henry, Bruce needs a, ga a gadget site now. Like, what's her name? Help me, Randy. Uh <laughs> Uh, hair Tracy, not sure what that means. Hate, I think hate uh, is what he meant. Uh, she meant Thomas Henry. I have an office clip to keep the curtains together. Works good. Wife is sleeping now as we listen to Bruce. There we go, listening to Bruce. Uh, Thomas Henry, Peter, was your power bar a surge protector? Uh, that may have been the problem. We've had no problem with the converter I mentioned. And Seakeeper, the sales lady in the perfume shop, thinks I'm wearing Ode oh, Terra Tata. <laughs> WD-40 will remove glue left behind by duct tape. There is a method to my madness here, people. There you go. He's thinking about all this stuff. Yeah, there's. there you go. Thomas Henry, awesome. Yeah, you know, there's a method to the madness. Um, I came up with another item, uh, something called, uh, I don't know how what else to call it. Uh, it's wrinkle spray. Not for your face, no. For your clothes. Wrinkle spray. So if you've got clothing that got all mushed up, uh, you won't have an iron and an ironing board in your room. You can't bring an iron board, iron into the room anymore with you. You can't bring an iron with you. Uh, they won't allow that fire and all that. But uh, wrinkle spray, just spray the clothing and let it ease off, especially when you first get there. You first unpack, uh, spray your clothing uh, right away and let, the, or let those wrinkles get out and let the clothes hang and relax. And that should be a way to go, especially going out, you know, formal evening or uh, going to the steakhouse restaurant. And, uh, you know, guy's got a shirt. The woman has the top. You don't want to have all these wrinkles showing, if at all possible. Otherwise, head to the uh, onboard store, pick up a new top, a new shirt, and uh, wear it to the fancy restaurant, uh, you know. Or, or if you've got a, a shore day uh, and then steakhouse that night, uh, pick up, a, hopefully, uh, a, a good priced shirt or top on shore. That's a good excuse to buy new clothing. And then you don't need the wrinkle spray, I guess. So <laughs> keep that in mind. <clears throat> Big sport mugs with straws right here. These guys right here, right here. Uh, bring two of those. Um, some of the cruise ships are now clamping down on even bring, bringing water, bottled water on board. They're, Norwegian is, is, is ridiculous. They're not even allowing people to bring bottled water on board a cruise ship well bring these babies right here right here and then waltz yourself into the buffet and head for the station where you can get your tea your coffee and the juice they'll have a water uh, dispenser there load up on the water and fill up your sport mug right to the top and if they've got ice cubes available grab the ice cubes and load them up fill it up with water and you got yourself a water bottle get two of them and just go in there every time and you don't have to buy bottled water from these guys. You can always do it from your room, you know. If you uh, tell your steward to bring you a bucket of ice every day, which they will, you'll have a bucket of ice there about 9, 10 in the morning after you've come back from breakfast. And uh, take your spark mug and load it up with the ice cubes. Go to your bathroom, fill it up with the cold water. You'll be fine. And uh, use the little cups they provide you to top up your sport mug because you can only get that thing three quarters full because it's in there on an angle. And then use the cup to keep pouring it in until you're loaded up. And now you've got a full thing of water. Don't have to buy uh, that at the uh, you know on the, at ship pricing, right? 
Um, absolutely way to go. Uh, <laughs> Downy wrinkle release. Angela A is saying that's what that is. Downy wrinkle release. Tracy, don't bring the wrinkle spray in your carry-on. They will take it away. Why? Who knows? But they do. Put it in your luggage. Right? Put it in your luggage. See, keeper, dollar store, throw away toothbrushes. Use it and throw it away so the room steward doesn't get tempted to use your toothbrush as a toilet brush. The unused ones stay in uh, the uh, locked safe. There you go. So uh, keep your <laughs> gets an idea. Keep them in the locked safe. Very good idea. Uh, grab some cheap ones and off you go. Uh, let's see if I had anything else here. Oh, yeah. Mini, a miniature size bottle of hand sanitization liquid. You know that Perel? A little miniature one of those. Bring that. So that when you get back to your room, you can sanitize your own hands in your own room uh, because you're, you've are you been walking around the ship and you've gathered up germs from everybody else. Uh, you might as well be uh, sanitized the minute you get back into your room and keep it clean as, as clean as possible. On your phone, turn off your telephone the minute you get to the ship, if you can. Or at the very least, uh, turn the phone to airplane mode. Because as soon as you are in range of the, uh, oh, what is, it, is it called a transponder, uh, whatever that unit is called, as soon as the cell service figures that you're on the ship, you're now paying ship rates for cellular, and your phone company and the cellular uh, phone company of the cruise line, they're in cahoots to charge you as much as humanly possible. Avoid that like the plague. Uh, turn into airplane mode, or better yet, shut the phone off and put it in your vault your little security is, is vault there on board, you're safe, and leave it there. The only time you want to use it is when you go on shore and you're in a, a Senior Frogs or you're in a Hooters or a Starbucks and they're providing you free internet. Use it there uh, and then get back to the ship, shut everything off, and don't get nailed with a crazy bill when you come back because there are tales of woe out there from people who've come back from a cruise or they've come back from an all-inclusive holiday in Mexico or wherever they went and they got nailed thousands, hundreds of dollars, if not thousands of dollars in roaming charges for their telephones. And they hadn't thought of the fact that, oh, geez, uh, I got, I, I'm getting charged all these roaming fees and I didn't even use the phone. You don't want, you don't want to go there. Believe me, uh, avoid it if you can. It's another one of those little uh, safety tips. Bring binoculars, folks. Uh, you're on a cruise and you're on a balcony room like our friend here in the Mediterranean. Bring binoculars so that you can look out over the sea every day. You can look out over the uh, shoreline. When you're in port, you'll be able to look out over the port city, take them in with you into town. If you're going into a kind of a, a, a vantage point, like at Gibraltar, if you're gonna go up that cable car ride, you wanna have your binoculars with you. Why would you wanna pay $2 for a 30 second view through these cheapo uh, telescopes they have up there? Bring your binocs and enjoy the view for an hour at no charge. Those pay for themselves the first time you ever use them for more than 10, 15 minutes. After that, they, they, that binocular, those binoculars are free. And if you can afford the nice ones, well, God bless you for that. Get the ones that have image stabilizers built in and all that. Well, with the zoom features, fantastic. Go nuts. But uh, you can buy a cheap $30 pair of binoculars, you know, at, at, uh, at Walmart or at, uh, you know, CVS or whatever. Uh, they work great. And uh, I've taken my cheap binoculars. I've had these now for like 12 years. I've taken them on cruise after cruise after cruise. Can't lose them because they're cheap, and uh, they work great. I love it. I've seen whales uh, breach uh, with the blowholes shooting that little mist in the air, and I'm watching whales that are like a mile away from the ship, a half a mile away, and people standing all around me, they're just looking like they have no idea there are whales right over there uh, uh, breaching and, and, and swimming along just off the, you know, the starboard side or the port side. And I'm, I'm looking at it, enjoying the show, and no one around me knows it. Occasionally, I've had it happen where I'm watching for whales, and someone's like, oh, there's a whale over there. And then I'll look over. I'll see the whale. I'll look back, and the person's seeing it with their naked eye. They got lucky. And all around, the rest of them are doing this. Where, where, where is that? And I've zoomed in already. I found it. I'm watching. Love it. Absolutely love it. So, yeah, take your binoculars. Absolutely. Bring beverages with you if you can. Uh, a bottle of wine per passenger is allowed, and also uh, soft drinks. Um, I, of course, my favorite drink, caffeine-free Diet Coke. Um, I bring, you know, two, three dozen if I can on board a one-week cruise, easy, uh, because I don't want to pay two fifty to three bucks a can on board the ship. Uh, are you kidding me? Thirty-six cans 
even diet regular diet coke 36 cans at three bucks a shot 108 dollars are you kidding me i can buy three dozen for like 10 bucks i mean geez you know don't want to give them 100 dollars for for no good reason really i just don't want to do it cheers all right uh let's see any more messages coming in i think i saw some here uh wendy thompson cvs is one block down from the holiday inn uh, Port of Miami. I stocked up on anything that is objected to before we board. <laughs> uh, there you go. Just stock up. Wendy Emanuel, does anyone know how cells work on ship in Alaska? Won't try, uh, won't my AT&T phone work because it's in US out of the country? Check with your provider. And the reason I say this is there is fine print in your telephone contract. And it may well be that you've got unlimited calling uh, in the continental USA that excludes Alaska and Hawaii, be careful for that. Be sure you're not getting nailed roaming charges because it's Alaska. Um, double, triple, quadruple check that. Um, I think a lot of people uh, could get caught on that one. I would really look into that. Um, Tommy Eaton, will they charge more roaming charges even before you leave the port? Uh, they might, Tommy. They might. Um, it all depends on just which tower you know you're getting your signaling from. Um, uh, be careful for that. Uh, on the other hand, check with your provider. Uh, you might be able to get an international plan that will they specifically say, "Oh, this works on international waters too. It's it's good globally." You might have a plan like that. Look into that. Um, good question, Debbie uh, Scott Batchley is asking too. Steaming bean beverage is not allowed aboard Norwegian Cruise Line. Hell with those guys. Hey, heck with those guys. Go with somebody else. Sneak it on, put it in your bag, and just go. Wendy Thompson, we had our binoculars on Viking. We were on deck using ours. Uh, we we here, see, I should have brought my binoculars. Look, they have some. Uh, we had our binoculars on Viking. Uh, we were on deck using ours. We here, we here. I'm not sure what you're saying, Wendy. I'm, I'm You're losing me on your lingo here. Uh, but you got to have your binoculars. You just want to have them. They're fantastic. The streaming bean, why would anyone in their right mind drink caffeine-free Diet Coke? You know, steaming bean, you got to be sick. I mean, you just, you know, you got to be, you either got to be bald, uh, one biscuit short of too much weight. Um, you're a YouTube creator that doesn't know what he's talking about. Uh, there's, you know, there's, but today I have not lost my mind. I've got regular Diet, a regular Diet Coke and I'm getting all caffeined up. And that way I'm good for hours. Two shows today, this one and eight o'clock tonight. Trivia night. So I'm ready to go, Steam and Bean. I hope you're ready because uh, I, I got some doozies for you. Um, Peter Heckema, another thing we take on board is sanitizer. We clean the cabin down, doorknobs, et cetera, those, those wipes. You can get those wipes, those sanitizer wipes in those uh, small quantity packages, can't you? Like they hold maybe 20, 30 at a time, and you just dispense out like a little Kleenex container. Great. Portable, easy to use. Good idea. Uh, let's see. It's steaming beans. Still looking for Knowlton. <laughs> You're still looking. I'm still looking like Knowlton Nash, the old CBC uh, a news reader that only Canadians of a certain age know. 90% uh, of the folks watching this have no idea what you're talking about right now. <laughs> I have fun with the steaming bean. Actually, we all have fun with the steaming bean. Uh, Wendy Thompson, we had ours. Uh, we had ours. Someone else said they wish they had their own binoculars with them. Yeah, you know, they, people, they give you those envious looks when you are on the deck of a cruise ship and you're looking out through your binoculars. I know there are people all around me going, oh, geez, I should have brought mine from home. I, you know, I wish I had a pair right now because now, now I know I could really appreciate these things. You know, all the years I've had those damn binoculars in the closet there, never used them at home. The one time I'm going on a cruise, I forgot all about the fact that I had binoculars. Never even thought I should have taken them. Yep, uh, on a cruise ship, you got to have binoculars. Absolutely. I mean, if you're 200 feet away from the swimming pool, way up there, and there's a gorgeous woman walking around in a bikini, you got to have binoculars, man. You got to zoom in on this stuff. These are opportunities you can't miss. Or is for sure viewing. Uh, well, whatever, you know, whatever turns you on, you know, it works, you know. Binoculars are binoculars, you know. Uh, <laughs> Peter Ekema Thomas, it was a combination surge and power bar to answer his question. Wendy Thompson, don't turn into Benny Hill. Don't do it. The steaming bean, I will be wiping down our cabin. I will. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> uh, the steaming bean is showing his charitable side uh, to all of us. Uh, you got to love it. He's telling me that he's going to be wiping down the uh, the cabin for, uh, for himself, for me and my wife, because Stephen Bean wants to go on a cruise with my wife and I, Jen, as a threesome, and he's prepared to and offering to wipe down the cabin uh, with those sanitizing wipes uh, to get rid of all those germs, you know, before we get things started. What a nice guy. <laughs> uh, I still cringe at the thought. That uh, my wife and I are on our bed in the room, and above us is that cot hanging off the ceiling where the steaming bean is snoring away up there with one arm already off the side, and a ship is rocking back and forth. I'm worried about the other arm coming, and I'm worried about one of those legs flopping over because steaming bean is one biscuit short of a magic number, and I don't want landing on me in the middle of the night in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> I know that Jen will be holding the covers high up and looking up at the looking up there going, please God, no, don't let him fall down on us. <laughs> uh, it'll be a cruise we'll never forget. I know for sure a cruise we'll never forget. Jane Peters, hi all and Bruce. Jane, Andy Jane 11 popping in from work again. Laugh out loud, tea break this time. Laugh out loud, legal break. Uh, Jane, I've already said hi to you. I've given you a shout out at the beginning of this show. I got your PayPal last night. $50. I've told everybody how generous you are to me. I thank you so much for your support. I love it. I'm glad you're sneaking out of the office and watching us. Heck with the boss. Heck with the coworkers. Watch what's going on. We're doing trivia. Eight o'clock. I'm on the air in, uh, what is it now? Uh, two hours. Less, a little less than two hours. I'm on the air. Hopefully, you'll be able to catch trivia tonight, and we'll have some fun with that. Uh, welcome back. Steaming Bean and TJ, he's saying hi. Sea Keeper, I want to get myself a black light flashlight so I can see what cabins, walls, and the carpet look like in the dark, just like CSI. Ew. <laughs> I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Oh, my goodness. Paul Wilgus Bean, I think he looks like Milton Berle. I could look like Milton Berle. Un Uncle Milty. How about that? Uh, my laugh on Wendy, ah, Jane Peters, Benny Ho, <laughs> Jim Thomas. Hey, all 82 in Anderson, California. Jim, welcome back, pal. Jane Peters, Hail Double X, the steaming bean. Where do you work, Auntie Jane? Debbie Manuel, hi, Auntie Jane. Wendy Thompson, bring biscuits, bring biscuits. The steaming bean, Paws of Ponson B pies. Ponson, Ponson B pies are the second best pies in New Zealand, he says. Jane Peters Bean, I work for the New Zealand government, work and income like center link in Aussie, double X, all good Brucey. <laughs> Jane Peters will be lunchtime. Yay! So she's going to have lunch when I'm doing my trivia. Fantastic, Jane. That's awesome stuff. Uh, working for the government, you got to love that. You never get laid off. Absolutely fantastic. The job that keeps on giving Thomas Henry. It's now 12, 11 a.m. on Friday. Did I miss trivia? <laughs> Thomas, we haven't started trivia. We start trivia in an hour and 50 minutes. Hang in there. Two in the morning for you. Oh, my goodness. Uh, that might be a little too late for you tonight. I don't know. Unless you get some of those lattes in you, I, I, you might be out of lunch there uh, for the uh, trivia show. <laughs> Debbie Manuel, Sea Keeper, I would only use black light when uh, you are leaving the room. May not sleep well if you check it out before you sleep on in that room. Yeah, you may want to, you may want to wait till checkout time before you. <laughs> what have I been sleeping in? Then you can play the game. You can play this game called Well, which one are mine, and which one were here first? <laughs> what did I add to the party? I want to know. Oh, my, oh, my. Jane Peters, hi, Miss Debbie and Team uh, ZX. <laughs> the steaming bean, the best New Zealand pies are in Wairoa where, 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 in Hawke's Bay, he says. So he, he, someone who knows, he's been there. Um, steaming bean, I, I think you're maybe one pie short of uh, knowing all about those pies. Uh, from what you've been telling us, uh, <laughs> where it looks like Weroa, where where Oa is how I pronounce it. I would pronounce that Weroa in Hawks Bay, New Zealand. I think fantastic. Oh my goodness, uh, would love to try some nice pies in New Zealand. Uh, same with Australia. I wouldn't mind. How about some chocolate cake? Do they make good chocolate cake down there? I'm sure they do. Um, 
yeah, not bad at all. Any more uh, packing tips? I don't know if I've written anything else down today. Um, oh, that, oh, yeah, I got one more. Snorkel gear. If you know you're going on a cruise to the Mediterranean, no, Mediterranean to the Caribbean, okay, and you're going to be at some, uh, a, you're going to be on the private beach resort that the cruise line has, or you're going to be going to the Cayman Islands, or you're going to be, uh, you know, wherever there's a beach, you may want to bring your own snorkel gear. And why do I say that? Because you don't have to go with an escort, an escorted tour on a bus to a ship to a coral reef, back to the bus, back to the ship. <clears throat> you can just get off the ship on your own. You've got your carry-on bags with you with those the nylon netting bags that hold these things over your shoulder, and you can head to the beach on your own, snorkel all you want without renting anyone else's gear that someone else used you know, yesterday or whatever. They're yours, and you're not renting them, and you're not paying an exorbitant fee to go on a snorkel tour with somebody. And you can go for as long as you want or as short as you want and be done. And then get back to the ship and enjoy. Uh, even if you use them just one time, you might save 50 bucks each. 100 bucks just to bring your snorkel gear with you. If you get to use them twice, great. Uh, even even more power to you. So there's, there's a reason why uh, you want to do that. These excursions that are available from cruise ships, a lot of them are, are very good and are worth the money. But some of them are overpriced bus tours. Really, uh, you might even be better off teaming up with a couple you met at dinner the night before, or earlier in the cruise, on one of these dinners where you got seated with a bunch of folks. You find out that you want to go to um, Cayman Island. You're in the Cayman Islands. Rather than take an escorted tour <coughs> to Turtle Bay or, or to the Turtle Farm or, or to Hell, uh, there's four of you. There's six of you. Grab one of those minivan taxis. Grab that guy for like three hours. And for 60 bucks, 20 bucks an hour, that cab's yours. And that that islander, that native islander that lives there all the time, they'll take you around. That you get away from the beaten path of all the other tour buses and the mayhem of, of Cayman Islands and uh, go go out to the blowholes or head over to hell or uh, get a ride all the way to uh, to uh, to Rum Point and back. Bring your binoculars, bring your camera. You'll be taking some neat photos and you'll be seeing some neat sights. And for this, for the six of you, uh, for 60, even if it's $100, the six of you, it's 15 bucks each for the cab driver for the whole day. I mean, geez, you can't get a tour like that for 15 bucks. You can't buy a tour on a cruise ship for $15 a person. It doesn't exist. Might be a tour, might be a tour of the gangplank, maybe. That's about it. So uh, keep that one in uh, in mind. Uh, let's see what's going on here. Uh, Jane Peters, really being, I am like six hours away from where you are. Uh, good pronunciation, Bruce, laughing out loud. Thank you, I'm trying. <laughs> Stephen Bean, meat buys, he's saying. Jane Peters, yum. Pamela Jordan, wow, Bruce, uh, step away from the caffeine. I mean, calm down. <laughs> Tracy's laughing. Wendy Thompson, chocolate cake. Next bean will taste test. Oh, next bean will taste test. Here we go. Jim Thomas, uh, what don't what don't like among from what? Uh, uh, what don't like among from rented scuba equipment? Don't use your black light on a scuba suit. You don't want to know. You don't want to know. Don't go there. Oh, no, don't go there. Oh, my gosh. Peter Heckema, one reason we always sanitize our cabin the first day of the cruise is sometimes the crew uses dirty towels from past guest passengers to clean the countertops, the mirrors, etc. Not good. There you go. Ah. Jane Peter says, I will taste it too. Uh, chocolate cake? She'll taste off chocolate cake. Peter, you make a great point about the, uh, the cabins. Bring your own wipes. Wipe it down uh, yourself. Give yourself that peace of mind. I can't argue with that whatsoever. Steamy Bean, uh, why roa? Why roa is how he's saying. That's how you pronounce where roa. <laughs> why roa? Okay. Why roa it is. Why roa New Zealand? Meat pies. How about that? I mean the chocolate cake, though. Uh, I'm not a meat pie kind of guy. I like shepherd's pie. Don't mind that. Uh, Costco shepherd's pie. Really like that. Uh, Jane Peters, she's smiling with the sunglasses on. She's thinking this is good stuff. 
Absolutely fantastic. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, pies, ice cream, easy, easy sell for me. Uh, yeah, desserts of any kind, I think, are, uh, are my uh, weakness and forte uh, and my pleasure on a cruise ship. Uh, I love nothing more than uh, taking a stroll on the ship. Well, let's go walk by the bistro bar and see what the uh, selections of gelato are or the selection of the free desserts beside the coffee bar. Let's see what they've got there. They change that every day. And then uh, breakfast time, a uh, little late on breakfast. That's okay. Have my breakfast and then on the way out the door, well, let's walk by the dessert section. Just see what the, uh, what the cakes are, cakes and pies and desserts for later today. Oh, look at that. And then, of course, uh, another little habit I have is walking around the deck on the promenade deck. When I come back into the ship, if I'm anywhere near the main dining room, I'll head over to the menu and I'll see the dinner menu for tonight. And uh, there they are listing all the entrees. And then the bottom, there's today's special desserts. That might decide whether or not we're even going to be in the uh, restaurant tonight or not at the main dining room. It might be a specially dining room or restaurant or, or it might be the buffet. It, all, all depends. it could be the dessert that decides it. You got to be open and objective to, you know, receive all information. I mean, information is power. You know, absolutely. You got to know. Uh, <laughs> Jim Thomas, Mung equals tasty people that used it. Okay. Sterling Bean, roll the R. Okay, roll the R. So it's Y Roa. Why, how about that? Y Roa. Oh, very good. Pretty cool. Tracy Bolio uh, on Princess, the. Gelato uh, is uh, is is no is, is it no no good is is no I S N N W I'm not quite sure Wendy Thompson eggs Benedict oh eggs Benedict yeah in the buffet oh it, yeah yeah that's pretty good yeah if you get if you get to the buffet when they're just coming out fresh oh. mm, nice I love the buffet on the cruise ship when they are making the the omelet fresh uh, you're pointing at the ingredients. And, uh, you know, he dips his hand or his gloved hand into the uh, bacon and you say, oh, no, another one. Oh, yeah, another helping of bacon and the cheese and the mushrooms. Oh, making the omelet right there on the spot. Mm, just just like Vegas. I love it in Vegas, uh, getting the omelet made fresh, uh, say, at the, at the Orleans uh, Hotel in the, in the buffet there, making the omelets fresh on the spot. You just point. The, there's the shrimp and the ham and the tomato and the oh. Wonderful. Oh, love it. Um, let's see, Tracy, not included with your coffee card anymore. Oh, no kidding. Oh, the, not the gelato. No, but the desserts used to be. Uh, the desserts used to be. Maybe they changed that. Jim Thomas, uh, what is uh, what is Travia all about tonight? What's Travia? Uh, oh, you want to know the subjects tonight? If I tell you the subjects, you can go Google it right now, write down all the answers, and then you'll kick ass. I can't let you do that. That's not fair, Jim. We've got to have some fun. Uh, not tasty, nasty, Jim Thomas is saying. Not tasty, but nasty. Uh, Jim is asking, what's he talking about? Uh, oh, oh, mung equals uh, nasty, not tasty. People that used it. Oh, I see. Oh, thank you, Jim. Thank you. Um, Tracy, uh, do, do you do all those stops for desserts on the cruise you were talking about? You'd be lots of biscuits over. <laughs> well, I read and I watch. Uh, you know, I, I look at them. I just don't get to eat them all, obviously. Yeah. Uh, you got to pace yourself, you know. I mean, I know I like my I like my ice cream and chocolate sauce at the end of dinner, so that precludes the rest of dessert. So maybe it's a mid afternoon treat, you know. Uh, but you got to pick one, right? It's kind of hard, you know. So yeah, you got to Tracy. You got to really pace yourself on a cruise ship because things can get out of hand uh, quickly. Uh, cheeks can fall out of place badly it, it quickly. Yeah, we don't want that. Debbie Manuel, JT is pain. His pain meds are kicking in. <laughs> Ours paid with. I hope so. Steamy Bean, uh, Norwegian makes great bite sized pretzel biscuits. How about that? Bite sized pretzel biscuits. Steaming Bean knows. Jane Peter, yes, Tracy, laughing out loud. Uh, uh, Jim Thomas, yeah, guessing so. Guessing the meds are kicking in. Oh my. <laughs> Jim had a knee operation last week and he's on the meds to kind of manage the pain. So, you know, got to stay on top of that. Steaming bean, which cheeks are you thinking of? Are you talking about? I, I'm thinking about the cheeks that can fall out. You know, they're, well, I guess there's more than one, isn't there? Uh, we've got to watch those. <laughs> or maybe not watch them. Just, you know, try not to look at them, you know, really. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Certain cheeks are left best to oneself. 
and uh, not the rest of the world, uh, like Speedos, uh, you know, uh, acting as dental floss around cheeks. I don't think that's a good idea. Do you folks, uh, you know, those thong, those thong uh, bathing suits uh, on thin, skinny people, I don't mind thong bathing suits, but on uh, one biscuit short of some kind of weight le level thong, thong bathing suits, I think are a bad idea. I, I or thong underwear, bad idea. And uh, uh, what is the other one? Uh, what's the other bad idea? Is wearing those uh, those pants? Those uh, what are those called? Those yoga type pants, or are they? Uh, what are those pants called? My wife. It drives Jen crazy. Uh, women wearing these uh, really tight, stretchy workout pants as pants in public uh not good no not a good idea fashion faux pas that's what they're what she calls it steam and bean uh, <clears throat> which cheeks are you thinking of and then uh talking of and then he's saying uh, bruce's booty <laughs> uh, uh Thomas henry saying marine traffic tracker has us just about at gibraltar all right fantastic uh, spandex the steaming bean is thinking spandex yeah those those spandex type by uh, ladies, um, yeah, I don't, I, you know, some some of you are not designed for those, or the pants are not designed for those functions uh, necessarily for certain body types. Yeah, it drives my daughter crazy, and uh, yeah, the Gen too. She kind of ooh, you know, not not appropriate. No, 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 not appropriate. But you know, the world is the world, and everybody has their way of dressing it. Uh, what can I say? Uh, thanks for the thumbs ups today. Let's see how we're doing here. I've got 30 thumbs ups now. Thank you for 30 thumbs ups. That's one. Two. Thank you for super chat today. Uh, the $20 super chat that came in from our buddy uh, who picked up uh, the win uh, on board the uh, star. You got to love that. Uh, here I am the other day talking about don't play that game with the key that goes in there. Thomas Henry picks up 200 bucks on board the star using that exact machine. Turned it, nailed it. Way to go. Uh, sent me 20 bucks on Super Chat. Thank you so much. And thank you to Wes, Wes Morrison. Uh, I don't think Wes was here today, but or, or if he was, he wasn't talking to me. Wes, uh, giving you a shout out. Thank you for the PayPal donation today. Really appreciate it. And Auntie Jane, uh, coming through big time. Thank you so much, Auntie Jane from New Zealand, sending me a a donation on my uh, PayPal. Uh, so appreciative. Uh, funds are instantly available, no waiting, uh, and much cheaper to uh, to to handle the transaction. It's fantastic. Love you guys for that. Uh, thank you for all your help. Uh, Steaming Bean, uh, Ste Bruce is a mankini. It's a mankini. Uh, Jane Peters, uh, sachet away, Bean. Steaming Bean here. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I am on the air in one hour, 35 minutes, if I've got my mathematics working for me. Uh, trivia, Thursday, primetime trivia. I've got about four or five of these questions ready to go. Uh, we will see what uh, we can do here. Um, I've got music trivia. I've got uh, food trivia. I've got some Hollywood trivia. Uh, I'm just going generic topics here, uh, but that's all you're getting. Uh, a little variety here. I got a couple of other trivia questions on some other topics, and uh, we'll have some fun with trivia at uh, eight o'clock Eastern time, one hour and uh, 34 minutes away from this minute. So thanks for all the thumbs ups. Thanks for the donations. Thanks for the support. Thanks for the new subscribers. Thanks for the existing subscribers and viewers. Love it. I'm going to take a pause here and uh, gather myself up. Get this video posted on the channel and get ready for trivia. Debbie Manuel, Yahoo, going to have a uh, rest up for trivia. See everyone in less than two hours. <clears throat> um, uh, Bruce, uh, are you a sub on my channel? I think I am. I think I am a sub on your channel. Uh, Steamy Bean, Bruce, yep, I think I am. Tracy Dunlop, thumbs ups. Um, yep, I think I am. Yeah, I think I am. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Thanks again for everybody joining in. 31 subs, thumbs ups already and climbing. Wonderful. Uh, we'll get more in the after hours. Enjoy the evening. Thank you, Tracy. Have a good evening to everybody. This is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce saying thanks for joining me on my May 3rd, 5 o'clock uh, show. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll see you in an hour and uh, 30 odd minutes for the 8 o'clock Eastern Time show. Prime time trivia Thursday night. 
And uh, we'll see how much fun we're having tonight with these questions. See if we can stump you. No cheating, no Googling. I'll see you guys later. Goodbye for now. We'll see you.